Welcome back to Miller's Construction. Really appreciate you guys joining us. We're in beautiful Las Vegas at the International Builder Show. Hope you guys enjoy this. This is gonna be through a remodeler's eyes, all the different venues and exhibits. So sit back and enjoy the show. Opening day. Always an impressive booth. Wirehauser. Really easy to cut. Works yeah. well if you're uh, familiar with like an alpha blade, the snap off blades. Those also work really well. The uh, slide out retractable utility knives, those mm -hmm. work well. Yep. Table saw? Table saw. Uh, run it through it through saw. Yeah. If you're saw. running it through a table saw, my advice is make sure you got eye protection. There is some little pieces of steel slag in here that come flying out. They, uh, take it from my advice, they, they hurt. They hurt when they come back <laughs> in the face. It's good. No matter what you're cutting on a table saw, you should also have dust collection yeah. on it. Yeah. Yeah. So how how? Hey, is it recording, Aaron? It's recording. Okay. <laughs> Check out this sliding door from Quaker. I mean, I'm six foot one. How tall do you think that is, Jake? Twelve foot, at least. Twelve footer. That's cool. So we are in the new product zone. This is where you can find new products that might not have even made it to the market yet. I thought this one was kind of interesting. Frog tape, flashing tape, kind of weird. Easy wings for your miter saw, kind of cool. This one was also interesting to me. Pro flash building products. So I guess that's for an exterior situation, I would guess. I'm not real sure. They show it, you know, against OSB. Kind of interesting. And this door over here is really interesting. This is called the Van Air, a ventilation, ventilation system designed as a door. So I'm guessing and replaces those ugly louvers, like if you need to vent a mechanical room or something like that. They even show it with a washer and dryer in there. That is pretty cool. BC Wood. This immediately caught my eye. Introducing the vent out. It's designed to make the installation of vents to ducts easier, watertight, and secure. Pull out the red cover before installing the roof cap. And I guess that's for, I've got it hooked up to an exhaust fan, but kind of interesting. Just this red part right here. So it gives you a nice solid connection, I guess. That's cool. Vent out. The ventout.com. Just a ratchet strap. World's first portable ladder footing system. 
Hmm. And then of course we've got the Timber Bats, Timber HP, fairly new company. So this is wood insulation. I don't know much about it yet, but it's supposed to perform pretty comparably with rock wool. Next gen building products. Max Terra lightweight half inch panels. This is kind of cool. It's like a vinyl stone veneer. Putting on vinyl siding, but it actually looks pretty good, feels pretty good. Miter doesn't look terrible. It's interesting. In so fast continuous insulation. This is interesting. Reminds you of ICF, doesn't it? But it goes on top of your wall. Let's see how it works here. Built in studs, built in rain screen. It's interesting, that's for sure. 3.75. This is an in-wall, innovative dehumidifier systems. The most advanced tankless wall-mounted dehumidifier available is green. Dehumidifier pump. That is really cool. Avlock wool. Pro insulation. What sure feels nice. <laughs> and over here we got this Rubio Monocoat Duro Grit. Kind of cool. I always enjoy the new product zone. Real Mod Modular Metering. This might be for Richie Ermer right here. Shout out to Rich Ermert, Clay County Connect, Clay County Electric, excuse me. Matt's got me so used to saying triple C, man. I don't know what this thing is. It's Sashco Exact Color in here. Not exactly a new product, but definitely a rebranded product. A wonderful product, for sure. Looks like Camo Systems has another camo fasteners excuse me has a new fastener wedge clip introducing a faster easier better way to fasten deck boards little bitty dude kind of cool at the lowe's booth they're talking about their mvps pro rewards program and you can go spin a wheel and win something, which is kind of cool. People have been winning a lot of t-shirts so far that I've seen, but kind of get a view of just how big this is. I've been at the LP booth a little bit already today. It was great. See what this guy wins. There we go. He's spinning. Just a kind of a cool setup. Oh, another t-shirt. That's what we've seen a lot of. Lots of t-shirts. Haven't seen anybody win anything else yet. Really cool. So we're here at the Paslo booth and I've got my friend here from Paslo going to show us something very cool. Yeah. Go ahead, Julia. Super excited that um, this summer we're going to be launching the market's first cordless coil siding and fencing nailer. Um, so this super powerful siding and fencing tool is going to hold up to 200 nails. It shoots um, up to two inches. Uh, it's going to give you that flexibility that we all love for a cordless tool. Um, it is a battery and fuel cell, so it's super lightweight. Yeah. Um, and again, going to allow you to leave the compressor and the hoses at home for your siding and fencing job. So your um, fiber cement jobs, engineered wood, wood fencing, cedar siding, um, all your favorites. All right. So, Julia, I'm going to put you on the spot. Yeah. What size nails again? Two inch. It goes up to two inches. Okay. So what are you going to start out with for like, are we doing stainless steel? Are we doing galvanized? What are we doing? So we're going to have three different options. So so we'll have an aluminum nail okay. um, at an inch and seven 
base, okay. an inch and seven eighths hot dipped, okay. and then a two inch hot dipped. Nice. And those ring are both shank. ring shank. Yep. Ring shank, okay. Yep. And the what? aluminum nail is screw shank. Do you know the diameter off, offhand? Uh, 0.86. Okay. 0.86. 0 0.86, 0 .86. very nice. Yep. All right, thanks, Julia. Super excited, keep an eye out for yep. it. All right. Okay. Okay, man. So this is locked in. All you right. got your glasses on? We're good. Okay. Uh, it has nails in rapid there. Fire. Yep. Right now, you got to load it in and press that once it, it's ready to go. Just a second, you got to wait for a second. Yeah, now you can press that in. You want to go on the other side? So we're ready for rapid fire? Yep. Awesome. All right, here we go. New pads load framer. Pretty awesome. Yeah. So now we are in the South Hall upstairs and it just keeps going forever. It's massive. Okay, I'm here at one of my favorite companies, Holstry, and we're going to do a little bit of an uh, interview with the owner, the designer, of all the Holstry stuff, and he's going to explain to you why we should switch to Holstry products instead of traditional tool bags. Everybody's stuck in this rut, man. Why do we need to keep going with traditional tool bags, right? So the idea behind Holstry is this modular system, and we're kind of inspired by tactical and military style sure. stuff. So it's, you can see kind of this molly, molly system, but basically we have a variety of these holsters and these are made CNC aluminum, steel, you know, all metal construction. So they're made in Idaho at the highest quality. You want this stuff to be heirloom, you pass it on to your kids. Right? They're not made in China? Exactly. Wow. Nope, they're made, they're made by us in our, in our, in our facility. And um, in Idaho, and um, so we got a variety of, of, of little solutions you can clip on to make your big solution, right? So we got this is our Tape Master, um, this is our Mag Master. This is one of our most popular products here. Super strong magnet. You can see this. Check this out. So there's your Boom. flat bar, you know, hanging yeah. on. Your, I don't think you'd do that because you probably get hit in the chin with it, but <laughs> you, you get the you get the idea. Right. Um, and uh, so that's one of our most popular products. Up front here, you can see we have the Joey bag. This is our regular Joey. Uh, the Joey Pros are like down here, where they have a, where they have a mod slot on the side. Yes. So we can yes. put other stuff in there. We can put, um, you know, we can we can hang. Can't do it with one hand, but we can hang stuff on it. Nice. Put your pencils in there. Yep. Um, and we can hang other holsters on there. And actually, I'll tell you, they make a pretty good a pretty good slot just for things like tape measures on there. Sure. Own. Yeah. Sure. So for so. belts. Yep. So we've got we've got two kind of different systems here, right? Sure. We yeah. got a chest rig and we got a belt. Yeah. So we have a couple different belt options. One is our normal pants belt. We call this the mod belt. You can see okay. we 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 CNC machine that buckle in our facility. We sew this. Nice. Um, and this is just kind of a wider than normal, stiffer than normal pants belt. So it'll hold some weight to it. It'll hold some weight and keeps, keeps its form. This, uh, all our clips fit around that a little bit better. And it's a little bit wider than a normal belt right. to fit those clips. Right. Um, then you can step up to our, our uh, Mod Belt Pro and Rip Belt system. And, uh, and what you're seeing here is the, is Todd's wearing, Todd, you can see he's got some tape on it. Yeah, Todd's got some Todd's, tape. Todd's wearing a Mod Belt Pro, which you can see has a Velcro on the outside. This is kind of a battle belt system. Right. For knows the tactical stuff. Right. So you pair that with your rip belt, which has Velcro on the back. Yep. And then you can just and then you can rip you can it off it at the end of the day or exactly. when you go to launch yeah, or exactly. when you when you're switching out. You could actually have multiple rip belts set up with different rigs yep. and just tack it on real quick. Yep. It's not going anywhere. Exactly. Super cool. So that'll go on the outside of a padded belt, which is coming out pretty quick here. Yes. So that makes it a little bit more of a traditional belt. You can take yes. on and take off. Yes. But the cool thing is the Velcro actually fixes the 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 holster in one spot. Right. So, so you can get it to where you want it. Yep. And then you Velcro it down around the edges of it. It just kind of self seals it. Exactly. Right in whatever space you want. Yep. You're not defined by someone else's design. Well, most of these type of belts only have they have two spots that you're supposed to put your right. big hanging bags right and then everything else you're working around belt loops and all that yeah. stuff so this is yeah. kind of a clean slate for yeah that. so that makes that, sense yeah that's the mod belt rip belt system and then you know we're always looking for ways to ways to change the way people carry and give people with different options sure so you've seen you've seen these vests that are yeah. that become popular oh yeah I don't like the vest very much I think it's, it closes you in right and it's kind of too tight to the body yeah yeah so for us we decided to do a chest rig so we call this the the mod rig and and this is a real simple piece of gear. It's just a what we call our mod slot mod panel here, which takes our holsters, 
And then otherwise, it's got a couple pockets here. It's got kind of a kangaroo pocket. Nice. All the way through, like if I go yep. there. Yep, um, very nice. And then that's connected to a, a top pocket, which you can tuck stuff into. It'll take a, it'll take a speed square. Um, and, uh, and, and that's about it. It's real simple. Yeah. But the, the idea is now I can stack up. I could put bags across the whole thing. Complete customization. It, you know, yeah. I could yeah. have three tape measures if that's your thing. Yeah, exactly. You, know, you can yeah. even put you, you can hang your you can hang your drill up here. Right. You know? Right. And you know what? If you're up a ladder and you're in an awkward yeah, situation, you might legitimately want to do that or yeah. even a nailer. Oh, I do it constantly. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, exactly. Siding something like that up on a scaffolding. Yeah. If someone were to go for a holstery type setup, do you think it would make them fast and light? Oh, without a doubt. Without a doubt. Without a doubt, yeah. All right, I mean, it's, you know, when you want to be fast and light, yeah. start with buying the gear. Start with buying yeah. the gear. It's going to help your back. It's going to save you in the That's long right. run. All right, cool, Like a man. cheat in the streets, Like baby. a cheat in the streets, yeah. baby. <laughs> Miller 10 will get you 10% off. Check them out. Holstery, where can they find you? www.holstery.com. That's a like gun holster Pretty with a simple. Y at the end. There you go. There you go. All right. Uh, it's primarily residential um, for iconic heating, um, especially. Um, the nice thing about this unit is it can do domestic water. So we're at the John's Manville booth, and I like a lot of John's Manville products, specifically their Go Board, but got this acoustics room. Let's check this out, Aaron. Or you can put bats too, but sometimes it's easier to blow in the insulation. Right, yeah, no, it's a lot easier. No problem with the uh, electrical fixtures, you know, light fixtures touching the air. I, I, yes, I think maybe there's there's some some things that you need to yeah, you need to do, okay, but so we could just place. kind of you know, how quiet is it in here? So, uh, it's quiet in it. Talk to our you know architectural rep, and he is the one. We are outside, and the weather is so nice out here. Beautiful Las Vegas, and check this out. Complimentary if you come outside. Nice Miller Lite, and it is ice cold. Mm. Oh man, that's good. Now check out what they're doing up here on the big screen. Installing a tub surround or a shower surround. I guess it's a speed competition of some sort. It's all about having fun out here. It's just such a cool environment. We got Pella back here, Mitsubishi and Train. We've got these houses that you can tour. Got a lot of nice engineered siding on there. Looks really good. Just a, such a cool environment.
cool what they've got set up over here. The mock-ups, very nice. And I think I see some diamond coat. That should be cool. And then over here, we're waiting on Ross Trafui speak a little bit about heat pump water heaters. Should be interesting. Halo, quite an impressive booth. Why not see what's new at the Halo booth? Now that's cool. Black trims, some bronze, satin nickel, some square trims. All kinds of different solutions. Canvas, which is pretty much what we've switched to completely. I really like that one. That's nice. These gimbals, no? Huh. Now, this is kind of cool. Fire garden. That is cool. So this company, I don't even know how you pronounce the name. They're giving out little carts. You put your backpack in there and roll it around with you. Like, um, like a suitcase or luggage, kind of crazy. It's big. Cambria makes some great products. I don't know how you say the name of this company. Krauss? I like that for like a kid's room. Really weird. They've got some really innovative products here. Let's check this out a little bit. Crazy how crowded it is in here. It's just wall to wall. Crazy. Can't even move. Let me turn you around. Look how crazy crowded this is. It's kind of funny. They've got all the faucet companies right next to each other. So we're just leaving Krauss. And uh, I'm already in the Delta booth, which I'm kind of a fan of Delta. Delta makes some really good stuff. Look how packed their booth is. So crowded. Tankless reverse osmos. Crazy. Ooh, fancy. Yeah, I love fancy. Wow. Nice, I know. Little spread paper. Ooh, that's cool. I love it. Big fan. Thank <laughs> you. 
Um, I make a different color generator that matches the uh, vegetation. Green. Super cool. This color booth is always insane. Just room after room. All kinds of craziness. Right. Let's go see what's going on over there. Reva shelf. They make some cool stuff. Let's go check out what they've got. I guess he wanted to be on YouTube. My wife would like this. She's into this organization crap. Look at there. Ooh. The new one that we just that dead, dead space is now used. Very cool. What's this one look like? Ooh, ooh, fancy. Open the door. Oh man. Reva shell. Back over in the central hall, kind of more of my wheelhouse, building materials, and uh, yeah, I just like it a little bit better over here, but man, it is busy, very busy. So this wasn't this in the new product section? Yeah. Yeah, right. this is this is the uh, de dehumidifier. So it's a cutaway. Kind of caught my eye in the fact that it, uh, you know, like in our in, for my home to home, I have to have a, a dehumidifier sitting in my floor. Right. Yeah, and right now because it's pretty much going to be a permanent permanent fixture. Right. That's going to be able to take away. The, so you just cut the, this into the wall. Right. And so it's all. Um, I see. How's it going, guys? How's it going, man? Look at all of those locking system points. Sixteen locking points. Good grief! Additional locking points. The other side, we have a really supersized pivot. So go away. At the April Air booth, make ERVs and humidifiers. Owen's checking this thing out. It's a dehumidifier. With a name like that, I can't hardly help but look at it. So it feels like Benjamin Obdike Hydro Gap. That's what it feels like. This is different. This is more like a traditional synthetic felt, but this breathable synthetic roofing underlayment and this, I don't know what the difference is. They feel very close to the same. They feel like Benjamin Obdike's Hydro Gap. All right, Kay. There's our floor trusses. What do you think about these steel ones? Better than a bologna sandwich? Wow. Steel floor trusses. Light con. You know, that would have been a lot lighter to carry up in that attic, okay? Good Lord. Playing a little music over here in the 84 Lumber. Booth. Kind of funny. We're in the Navian booth though right now. We got wonderful tankless water heaters. 
I put an AVN in my house and have had zero problems with it. And it looks like they've got a tanked version now. Very cool. Avi Link. Very cool. Aaron's over here talking to an avian rep. Champagne flowing. I think I'm gonna get me a Coors Light. Well, this old boy's happy, he's doing good. Yeah, Coors Light for me. She got her a starry. Me and Aaron are smelling cookies. They smell really good, don't they? We're looking around for them. And we got a guy out here cooking burgers. Oh, I guess so, yeah. And then you got that working platform all the way around it. Well, that smoke smells good, don't it? Seven o'clock. We're on the monorail. This is the first morning of all three mornings of the International Builder Show that we've jumped right on the monorail. And look, me, Aaron, and two other guys are here. <laughs> Every morning, we've been early. We've been like 8 o'clock, 8.30, like well before the exhibit doors open. And it's just completely crowded with people in here. So we're trying to get there early so that we can hopefully get tickets to this American uh, home show tour thing or something. So I don't know. We'll see. But uh, sit back and ride the monorail up there with a lot of space. I'm here at the U2 Fasteners booth. I've been using this stuff since 2016 when I was introduced to it at another trade show. Check out the size of this awesome 3D printed U2 Fastener Universal screw they've got here. What we're gonna do is we're gonna interview Kurt here a little bit. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes, the face of the company. Yeah, uh, the so Kurt, tell folks at home if they don't know, mm. Why should folks switch to U2 fasteners? So uh, they're wood to wood structural screws. Everything has an engineering evaluation so we can tell you shear strength, bending yield, tensile withdrawal, very important. We have a huge variety of 316 grade stainless steel where a lot of our competitors don't uh, offer stainless at all. We have all of our features and benefits and they're also tested too. So with a 316 grade uh, stainless steel construction screw, we can tell you the shear strength, bending yield, tensile withdrawal but you're not gonna strip any, you're not gonna snap any. The bits go in 90 degrees, so they stick on the recess and you can drive them in with one hand. We even changed the tip of the screw, so it, it'll bite on the first turn, and then on the second turn, we put our cut with teeth on it, so it bites really fast. So if you've never used our screws before, when you see that it sticks on the bit and it drives in right away, it's gonna yeah, blow your mind. absolutely. So that's something that I've looked for for years before. Yeah. That's one of the main reasons that I switched to U2 fasteners yeah. is that the actual fasteners stick on the bit. So you can see it so you can, like that. You can extend out and they're just fantastic. And see how it draw, drew that in real tight? Very and nice. nice. Clean hole, no cracking. So what nice I've learned cool. with other fasteners that don't have that tight recess, especially in a structural situation like that, mm. they seem to cam out a lot. Right, right. But with the U2 fastener, the recess is so tight. It goes in 90 degrees nice and tight, so that's why it doesn't cam out. It's not gonna jump out. Yeah. So the reason why those ones cam out is the recess is tapered, and so is the bit, so there's minimal contact. Let me show. Yeah, you see how tight that recess is? Just machined really well. Yeah. Not like most in the industry, right? which is really nice. And like yeah. Kurt said, we've got a variety of stainless steel items, but another thing that I wanted to show was these cap screws. Can you talk a little bit about the cap screws? Yeah, so the, the cap screws are a low profile washer head type screw, and they have the same exterior coating as everything else. So they're commonly used for cabinets, but right. they're not just for cabinets. You've used them for tub installs, yes. shower installs you're, too. You're not limited to interior applications, and they've got that same really nice right. tight recess. And what I really like about them, Kurt, that seems like nobody talks about, 
is the flatness of the head. Right. So the competitor has this bulge on the right. head. Right. And anytime I'm using this for like a an acrylic tub surround, right. that bulge sticks out and it'll actually bubble a it, little bit. Yeah, it'll bubble a little bit and yeah. it'll flare that drywall panel out and it just drives me kind of crazy. Right. These are nice and flat, great for window installs, like on nailing fins as well. Yeah. Even and we have they, this one in stainless steel in Texas. Maybe, that's crazy. They needed something a little bigger, but with also that cap head. So that's for the flange uh, in Texas because they needed stainless steel for gotcha. the salt water environment. Very nice. So mm -hmm. what is the thickness on this That's one? a 10-gauge. That's so a number 10. It's okay, bigger cool. bigger than the 8, right. but they, they like that real flat head. Yes. Love that flat head, especially on windows. Mm, yeah. So new construction with the uh, nailing flange. Hey, yeah. talk to us a little bit about one of my favorite products from U2 Fasteners. That's the Top Star. The Top Star, man. So, Kurt knows I love the Top Star. So the Top Star replaces shimming when hanging doors. And I can do a little demo for you right now. So if uh, you ever hung a door, it's usually a two-person job. And you have to play a lot around with shims where the door is never really straight, right? right. You, you nail in some shims. The door will buckle in. You have to buckle it out. You yeah. screw too far. It's too much. So it what we did... Take it, some work. Yeah. We took this screw, which is a screw within a screw. And if this is your door jam and that's your rough opening, we pre-drilled a 5 16th hole only. We use the crown and bit tool, which is a two-piece tool, and you drive it in as one piece inside the door jam. And when you take off the crown, that's going to spin the inner shank. And when you spin the inner shank, that's how you get your distance until your door's square. So once your door's square, all you do is you hide that behind the door stop or the weather stripping. So you use three per side where the hinges are and three on the opposite side. So with six screws, you can hang a door. You don't need any more shims. And what happens, Kurt, in two years when the door has moved or expanded or contracted a little bit? Right. So you hide this behind the weather stripping so you can just peel it back and then you can micro adjust it too. So you don't have to strip the whole door down and peel back all the, the trim. So there you go. And I've actually done that plenty of times. Over the years, I've had to come back, pull that weather stripping back, micro adjust my door, and usually it only moves one time. So I only right. have to do it one time. Right. Uh, but they just work so well. And I've been you using can still, those. You can still foam around it too, no problem. Yes, absolutely. Mm. I've been using these since 2016. I'll be honest, the first time I used them, I thought they weren't for me. Used right. them a second time and I was sold. That's why we give you enough to hang two doors. The yep. first one, you just kind of get used to it. You right. might not see the benefits, but on your second door, you'll know exactly what to do. Absolutely. I couldn't agree with that more. Mm. All right, Kurt. Well, thanks for the interview. Yeah. If you haven't heard of U2 Fasteners, how can they get a sample pack? Send us a message on Instagram. There you go. Instagram, they will hook you up with a nice sample pack of yeah. all a variety of their fasteners. Yeah. Nice little box kit there. And then if you want more information, you can contact Kurt on Instagram or just check out their website. What's your website, yeah, Kurt? U2Fasteners.com. All right. Thanks, awesome. Kurt. No problem. Thanks, Aaron. Thursday, what time is it? Let me get my phone out here. It is 12, 13 Thursday. You can kind of see the show is much less busy on a Thursday. If you're going to the show, I recommend Wednesday and Thursday. Tuesday is insane. We're here at the Diamond Coat booth at the International Builders Show, and Brandon is gonna tell us a little bit about it. What is Diamond Coat, Brandon? So Diamond Coat's a complete siding system designed with the installer in mind. So we remanufacture engineered wood, one piece outside corner with nailing flange. Uh, we, put a, we build a finish on it with a 30 year no fade warranty. And with any kind of pre-finished product, the one thing you wanna stay away from is any kind of face nails. Touch-ups can be really time consuming. So with our outside corners, inside corners, our rabbited trim, uh, it's all blind nail. So you're gonna have very few touch-ups with our product. Right, so show us a little bit of this rabbited trim here. What does that mean? So our rabbited trim, what we do is we rabbit the side out of it. Inside there, it's primed and painted. 
So you don't have to nice. worry about anything. So we don't have to caulk that joint. You don't have to do any caulking of the joint. Nice. The only thing that's required is to touch up the end, the cut end when you put it in and you're good to go. So the rabbited outside corners, is that all you have? Do you have trim too? We do have trim, four and six inch trim in the rabbited. And we nice. also have four inch outside corners in 10 and 16 foot. So lengths. like your trim that would go around a window or a door, you wouldn't have to caulk that trim. You wouldn't have to caulk it. Very it nice. aids in installation as well. Instead of measuring to the 16th of an inch, it gives you a little more leeway. So it installs a little faster awesome. too. Awesome. Okay, next question. What about if I've got like a hose bib or an electrical receptacle coming out? You got so let's some, go take a, you look got a solution this. for that? We do. All so right. we've got eight different configurations of our rigid mount. This is a split mount. So we can use this for any kind of hose bib. And if you have anything else too, these comes apart. So if you have an electrical uh, disconnect or a line set or something like that that's giving you problems, we've got a rigid mount that works specifically for that. Very nice. What's this, uh, what's this house wrap all about? So this is our here. part of our moisture management system along with our drip cap, color, color match drip cap, um, uh, brick ledge flashing, spacer flashing, H moldings. This is our Diamond Coat 5D branded house wrap. Very so it's nice. a non-compressible wrap that allows any kind of moisture that anything gets behind there in the form of wind driven rain or snow. It allows that to get back from behind there, protecting the building envelope, keeping your insulation and your wall cavity nice and dry. Very nice. Talk to me a little bit about this. What is this for? So that nail flange allows us to be able to nail our trim on the on the on the outside and eliminate the needs for face nails. Awesome. So that's going to save time on touch up, right? That's going to save time on touch up. Very and nice. also it's going to alleviate the need for face nails, which is un you know, unsightly, yeah. especially with a pre-finished product. Yeah. Okay. So you guys sell siding and trim, but do you have soffit as well? We do have soffit. Soffit fascia, do we yep. have some right here? Soffit fascia, here's, a, here's an oh, wow. example That's of our great ventilated soffit. soffit. Yeah, again, all the products are 16 foot in length. You know, as opposed to other, uh, other, other products that are 12 foot in length, goes up 16, 16 foot at a time. Wow. It's about a third of the weight of fiber cement, so it's a lot lighter to deal with. Yeah. No special tools needed. We've got um, post wraps here too. We do have post wraps, four right. and six inch for post wraps. Hey, tell us what's unique about your siding system that's different from most manufacturers. So this is what we call our rigid stack. This is a proprietary siding. We install a spline on the back, and we also mill a nail line, three quarters of an inch from, from the top. The what's that nail line for? The installation instructions requires us to nail, the, uh, nail our panel three quarters of an inch down. It gives us a proper holding power against the wall and still allows us to maintain a blind nail application. Very nice. So the spline allows you to one panel to sit and lock onto the bottom piece. Oh wow, I would imagine that that would help with wind uplift, right? It, it helps with wind uplift in those high high wind areas. Uh, it also aids in installation. So, it so you don't have to use gecko gauges or anything like that? You don't have like to use that? any kind of gecko gauges, story wow. poles, anything like that. It gives you a nice consistent reveal. So you're just stacking siding? Stacking and going. Wow, that is cool, man. Very nice. And here's another example of a rigid mount. So this is our universal mount. It comes with a four inch hole. So mainly guys are using these for lights. Yeah, so line take, sets. Let, okay. Yep, light for their lights. Oh, for their lights, okay. Yep, we can install their rough end box right inside there. Gotcha. Mount their light right directly to that. It's a four inch hole, so you can also use it for a, uh, a dryer vent also. Okay, okay, cool. And you guys offer some shake? We do have shake, three different profiles, seven, nine, and 12. They come in staggered and straight, straight shake. Very cool. Talk to me about this starter board. Why do I need a starter board? So this starter board is huge. All of our products have to have a ground clearance of six inches. So this starter board is impervious to any kind of moisture. This can be in ground contact and the measurement from here to here is six inches. So this allows us to hold our product off of the ground in six inches and allows us to uh, be able to maintain our uh, full product. So it's warranty. a warranty issue. It saves more warranty issues. Very nice. Price. Yep. Okay, so we talked a little bit about the outside corners that are rabbited. Is this an inside corner? This is rabbited? an inside corner. So we're launching these here at Guy. I was gonna say I don't think I've ever seen those. No. Nope, wow. No. Nope. This is new. This is new. So now you don't have to caulk the inside corners. It works just like the trim in the outside corners. Very nice. And here's an example of the trim. And what's unique about the trim other than the rabbit and the nailing flange? So the, there's one, one other the, cool, well, there's a couple other cool features. A couple other cool features. One okay. thing that guys really like is we also kerf the back out. So whenever you're putting it around a window, the nailing flange around the window 
it allows that trim to sit nice and tight to the wall and doesn't kick out. Yeah, yeah, so we hate that look. That's not a good look. No. It also brings the trim out flush at the window and trying to caulk something that's flush. Yeah. We all know how hard that Absolutely. is. Absolutely. We have a kerf in the back that we were able to, to we make a aluminum L bracket that slides in and allows two trim pieces to push together and hold a nice tight miter Isn't that joint. Awesome. Doesn't allow so it you to don't have to do a square forth. joint, you've got a better looking miter joint, and you don't have to use biscuits and a pocket hole exactly. and all that extra work just to tie your trim together. You can use that on doors, windows. Yep. Very cool. Exactly. And I'm seeing some drip cap up here. Do you guys sell color matched? We do sell a color match drip cap with everything. Okay. It saves you the having to take a uh, haul a break out to the job. They're nice. big and cumbersome. Nice. And yeah. just saves Is drip you. cap the only type of uh, metal trim that you guys sell? Or? So we have brick ledge flashing as well, and then also our spacer flashing. Okay. To go Very up nice. along those roof to wall intersections. What if I need a custom piece? Can I get just a roll of the stock we color? Have, we have color match a uh, coil. If you have your own brake and you prefer to bend your own metal, that works perfect too. So I can, can bend whatever I want. Yep. Very exactly. cool. Nice. We've got another example of a rigid mount here. Now, Brandon, tell me about that specific color right there. What's what's unique about that color? Because it looks different than a solid color. So this is what are we call, this is our premium colors. These are our dual blend colors. Okay. They're meant to mimic stained the stained wood look. And this is actually one of the new colors we're launching here at IBS. What's it called? So this this is um, this is our Denali. Denali, very nice. So it's it's almost like a rustic look, right? It is. It, it, it mimics a stained wood look. Yeah. Rustic stained wood look. What other colors do you have in uh, the duo blends? So the dual blends, we're launching three new colors here at IBS. Okay. We're launching uh, the the Denali, Dune, and also Honeycomb. You got a couple of uh, we, samples of those. We do right here behind you. We've got okay. uh, we've got a, a sample of all, oh, of, the, very all nice. of our dual blends. Okay. Bedrock, Elkhorn, Canyon, Chestnut. So you can see that it's almost like they've, like you said, they've been stained, almost like real wood um, on a cabin or something like that. Exactly. But you don't even have the maintenance. No. Yeah. Very low maintenance. Right. Take a hose, wash the dirt off. And, uh, and you're good to go. And once again, what's what's the warranty look like for this stuff? So it's warranted, not the chalk or fade for 30 years. Wow. You don't have to worry about any kind of chalking or fade. Impressive. If uh, folks want to find out more about Diamond Coat, where can they go? Go to, go to diamondcoat.com and I have all the information that they're looking for. All right. Thanks a lot, Brandon. Thank you. Maui. Maui. This guy is a beast. He's the one shot deal, man. Right. Neil, are you ready? On your mark. Get set. Did you do it? Oh, right, right, yeah, I'm going to do it. Get set. I don't want go, to ask. go. Oh, Let go. On your mark. Get set. Go. the camo booth with Brian. Brian, what you got for us, man? What's going on, Aaron? Appreciate you coming by the camo booth. So when you're thinking about camo fasteners, we're probably most well known for our clips, but we have structural fasteners. So uh, we just revamped this program a year ago. Best in class, best coating in the industry, stainless steel screws, color match composite screws. We have tape, we have tools to help you out with our clips and then our latest and greatest wedge clip. So uh, we redesigned this particular fastener to uh, replace the X clip. So one thing we really like about this is it's a universal clip, can you use with anyone's deck board and on any angle, right? So one-handed install into the groove and then you can slide it in place. Uh, it is an inch and three quarter now, so we reduce the size of the screw from two and a quarter to inch and three quarter to work with your sleeper systems. And it's got the best in class 316 stainless steel screw and gusset. Um, so I'll show you guys how that works along with our lever tool and clip drive. And we'll get to, to showing it out. So we're still gonna have our edge clips. So how this works is you can either put your edge clip onto the joist and into the groove, or you can put the wedge clip into the groove and then slide it in place. So what we do is we're gonna put all of our clips in place, rack that next deck board up, rinse and repeat five, six, seven boards, 
And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna lock it in place with the lever tool. So this is a board bender. And what we are gonna do is on a 20 foot board, we're gonna use four of these, 16 foot board, three, 12, two. Or if you're doing long, uh, runs that are longer than that and you're not picture framing, we recommend a lever about every five feet. Fits on a single joist, fits on a double joist. You just have to adjust that nozzle. So we're gonna put it on and then put it into place and then lock everything nice and tight. So once all that's locked in nice and tight, again, two on the edge, one in the field, we're able then to come back with our clip drive, chucks to your drill, really simple configuration, twist, drop down, drop the collar to replace the bit. Bit comes in every bucket of clips. We're gonna chuck it to your drill, drill not an impact driver, and we wanna make sure that we activate that clutch because we don't wanna over torque it. And then what you're gonna do is you're gonna come back and fasten down the boards. And then we can kick that lever tool off. We can have a guy putting clips and deck boards moving forward while your other team member drives the clips going back to the house. Very cool. Aaron, appreciate awesome. you, man. Good Thanks to see for you. showing it to us, Brian. Appreciate it, buddy. All right, Aaron got him a burger. Nice. Very cool. Aaron trying to film and eat at the same time. It's so funny. The whole. It, oh, you wanted the whole burger? We got we got good dinner later. How does it taste? What would you rate it? What What would you rate it out of ten? One being McDonald's. <laughs> Uh, considering I've had some pretty good burgers, I'd give it about a seven. A seven, okay. Seven out of ten, Juicy. well done. Tastes good. Juicy. This is a Steady, set, go. And they're off and racing. Now, if you haven't seen this yet, it's a brand new Steady Set interior installation system. The first thing you see I'm all doing, and all these components come pre-applied at the factory. First one is these flip and click brackets, because you flip them and you click them and now you have your wall depth set and your reveal the next thing you see over here too warrants done on the outside already over here too is that you just lift it right into place from the interior now check out this part of it right here this is a key part that's a head stabilizer right there that head stabilizer along with these brackets eliminates the need for a second installer you repeat it because the bear is repeating. That eliminates the need for a second installer. These guys are installing these on their own right now. Let's come over here to Aurelio's. Usually you'd have somebody on the outside over here, right? On the outside of the window, you do that awkward pass through. Maybe they're up on a 20, 30 foot extension ladder. That's not the case here. It's an interior system where you can do almost all the work from inside the home. So guys, nicely done so far. Flip it around. We are magically transporting Warren and Aurelio from the interior to the exterior. Another key component is what you're seeing right here, okay? This is, this, this is not a nail fin, it's a durable flashing fin. The beauty of this is all of your work is done on the inside where your screws are put. There's no puncture holes here, there's no nail holes going through here. All you have to do is do your taping, and we're not using our traditional Pella Smart Flash. We're just using a little gaff tape over here. Look at Aurelio, man. Nothing slowing you down. Want a boost? Just jump up and do it, lad. We'll give you a little bit of help over here, too. Come in here. Even though it's not the flashy tape we would usually use. Hey, 154 for Aurelio. Yes, nicely done, lad. That's going to put him on the leaderboard at the end of the day. He's never installed this before. Okay, Espen, not far behind. Well, that's a wrap for the International Builder Show 2024. It was great. We got to see a ton of exhibitors, tons of new stuff. Really enjoyed it. Lots of good food. A um, lot of fun. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. I wanted to share more than this video could actually contain, but it could have just went for hours. This place is so massive. So much fun. If you've never been to the International Builder Show, I highly suggest you check it out. Tons of fun. If you like this video, Click like, subscribe. Thanks a lot, guys.